the highest scoring team in the tournament so far with 13 goals to their name. And they have got their country going at the moment. As for Singapore, they started well with a 3-0 win over Myanmar. I think some people might feel it's got progressively more difficult for them. Three wins out of three, an unconvincing victory over Timor-Leste, and then a loss against Thailand, which also culminated in some fans making their feelings known in the stadium. The reaction of the coach afterwards as well garnered some attention. And so they come into this as the underdogs, despite being the hosts, despite there being a sellout crowd here of 10,000 people. The last time these two sides played in the National Stadium in 2018, Singapore defeated Indonesia 1-0 in front of 30,000 plus fans. Of course, things have very much changed since then, as we see the two teams make their way out here onto the National Stadium pitch, a ground in which Indonesia thrilled us just three days ago against Malaysia in a 4-1 win and that guaranteed them top spot and a place in the semi-finals against Singapore. There's Hadis Harun, the skipper, who had plenty to say. We'll talk about that in a short while as the two teams line up for the national anthems. of fans here in the National Stadium. I'm here with Rish Rush and Rai as we look at the lineups today. And there are changes for Singapore. They make four of them from the side that lost to Thailand's second string in that final group match. 
we see Nazem Lazari come back into the starting lineup. Song Wei Yung returns after not coming off the bench in that last game. And Nur Adam Abdullah also goes into that left back position because of Shakir Hamza's injury. He is out for the tournament. And it is going to be a back three with those full backs or wing backs pushing further up, you would think. And uh, Song Wei Yung is playing to the left of Shadan Sulaiman. Sun and Faris Rumley up top. The players that drop out Zukanen, Suzliman is on the bench. As I mentioned earlier, no Shaki Hamza for the rest of this tournament, which uh, of course is a big miss uh, for this side. Ami Shahin is the other one that doesn't start today. There are the two skippers, Asnawi on your right from Indonesia, Harris Aoun, the Singapore skipper. The officials all from Korea, Kim Hee Gon is the man in charge. We have a Korean coach as well, if you recall, for the Indonesians, Shin Tae Yong, and there is his starting lineup. They make two changes from the side that so thrillingly beat Malaysia here on Sunday with Rizki Rido Ramadani coming into defense and up the other end Dedek Setiawan is the striker and this is the interesting thing they are looking to play a 5-4-1 today something that they employed against the Vietnamese to great effect but certainly not something we expected in this match here against Singapore the ones to miss out Ezra Walian is on the bench and Ramai Ramakek is suspended. And there's a moment of remembrance for family, friends, colleagues, and every person, of course, who is passed on due to COVID-19, hence the tagline, emerging stronger together. Uh, as I mentioned, Rish Roshan Rai, he's so excited next to me. I know he can hardly wait for this one, Roshan. Really looking forward to this game of football. A young, vibrant, exciting Indonesian side with a wonderful attacking mentality and a spirit and a fight about them. And then this Singapore side, into the first semi-final since 2012 looking to create even more history playing at home after a bit of a blow against Thailand suffering that defeat looking to show everyone that it was just a one-off and that they are ready to make an impact and make the mark here on this semi-final what did you make of the formation that the Indonesians in particular are employing they're both going with three central defenders yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Both these teams going with uh, what looks like a system that uh, plays five at the back. But for Singapore, with Zulfami in there, he can just step into midfield as well if they need him to. So it could even be a four at the back for Singapore. At times, Zulfami has got that ability. There he is on the ball, just plays a quick pass back to Safwan Barudin. He can drop in and become a part of that back three. It gives them an option of being an extra body in the midfield as well, in possession. So keep an eye out on that little uh, tactical tweak for Singapore. What's interesting for me here is uh, Song and Faris on either side of Iksan Fandi. Good to see Song back in the lineup. I think, you know, they've been missing his qualities in certain matches. Mm. I feel like perhaps he may have just been struggling with uh, a groin issue that he picked up in his first game. So trying to manage his fitness levels, perhaps. Is that why you think he was saved against yeah. the Thailand uh, in the Thailand match? Yeah, and I think he, he what he brings to this side is a lot of, of power, a lot of energy from those midfield positions, and he knows how to pick out a pass as well. We've seen a couple of lovely two passes from him already. Stand by for these long throws from Pratama Arhan. Well, what they've got is uh, a man right there to try and make it harder, so he has to go high, and that's good hands for Hassan Sunny. Flat kick up immediately. Asnawi puts it right back into the mix. Oh, and there's look at that space there for Singapore on the right hand side. Singapore, blast of energy there. Motion mentioned. 
Talking of which, now here comes Irfan on the left for Indonesia. Wow, this is the kind of start everyone would have wanted. Yeah, wonderful start to this game. End to end at the moment, very early on. It's a nice touch from Derek Setiawan initially that just put it into the part of uh, Irfan for him to run onto. Good covering from Zulfami. Get benefits of having that extra body at the back there. Yeah, there was a lot of thought about Elkin Baggett starting for the first time, but he's back on the bench. The big man, 1.94. They've brought in Risky, who I thought was the best defender against uh, Vietnam, as they have this corner here. Not quite clear their lines, Singapore, but now they do with the skipper Harris. You can see the idea there, getting it up to his club teammate as well, Song Leo. Well, that's where Singapore have excelled in these counter-attacking situations. In possession, they have struggled. I don't think they've been very good with the ball, but those transitions, those quick transitions mm. from defense out to attack, especially with Song Leo in the side now as i said the ability to carry the ball forward and run at this uh indonesian defense or run into spaces in behind also got obviously the power and the pace of uh, iksan alongside him as well there's Nur adam abdullah his first start for singapore in a competitive fixture russian i mean th this is nervy stuff isn't it for him to be brought in in a crucial match like this yeah big test big test for the young man but uh Come back to him as Nasrul picks this one up. Right, from Nasrul Mazari, another one who's come back in two new fullbacks today. Nasrul started the first match, but has lost his place with Zulkanen in the subsequent ones. That was an interesting change as well on the other side, on the right-hand side. Zulkanen moving out for Nasrul Mazari. He's got a bit of experience as well. Yes, yeah, I think so. A bit of experience on that side of the pitch. Uh, just to keep track of uh, Irfan. But also, I think uh, fresh legs there. With, uh, with Nazrul in the side now. That's a good point you make, Roshan, because we know how good they are on that left-hand side, don't we? Indonesia. Ratama and Irfan. That has stayed in. It won't be a corner. You know, I, I in the build-up to this, I was expecting these two sides to make it into the last four of the competition, but this wasn't the semi-final that I was expecting. <laughs> You know, and it's, uh, it's a credit to Indonesia, the work that they've done in the group stages to make sure that they finish top of the group. And uh, I spoke to Safwan Barudin recently, and he mentioned that, you know, they're taking this challenge seriously. They know how good this Indonesian side are. At the same time, there was a little bit of relief, you know. I think they were expecting that having finished runner-up in their group, they were going to be taking on Vietnam in the, in the semi-final. Yeah, I don't think many people would have figured Vietnam finishing second in their group as an important challenge there. Nice one. Of course, of course the, this is the first of two legs, so yes. you can afford to be a little bit conservative today. You don't have to go for it because you still have a second leg to come. And that's but maybe, maybe that's going into the thinking of the coaches. Yeah, that's that's exactly it, right? Nobody wants to leave themselves too exposed in the in the first leg, and then have to chase the game in the second leg. So you want to be careful as well. Even if you do concede, you don't want to let the game sort of run away mm. with you. Remember, you've got another 90 minutes to get that goal back if you need to. So don't take too many risks. Enough noise in the crowd, mainly at the moment coming from the Indonesians who were terrific, the fans, as well as the team. They kind of played off each other, didn't they? Yeah. In, on, on Sunday. Yeah, wonderful atmosphere. And uh, we, we touched on that in the last game. We've spoken about this. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to do a couple of matches at Busan Stadium with Group B, and we had the Vietnamese fans as well, who've been, uh, who've been incredible. So it's a credit to, to all the fans. I mean, the Singapore fans as well, who've, who've come out in support of their side. You see Forrest has taken out there opportunity from a set piece for Singapore this is uh, their strength isn't it for Singapore and uh, Shin Tae Yong took great pains to point this out four goals from set pieces for Singapore of their seven in this tournament Shadan Sulaiman 
Great ball in. Looks like Inks have got a touch on it. Asking for a corner, not going to get it. Yeah, the qualities, the quality on the deliveries have been very good. And here, Shadan again just comes off. Indonesian defender there, I think it's uh, Fakhrudin. Well defended, he made sure he tracked the run of Irfan all the way in. Good ball from Shadan. It's Afra Medevanga, who's been a versatile player for Indonesia. Well, this is, we, we spoke about Zulfami for Singapore stepping forward into midfield. Alfiandra can do exactly that for Indonesia as well. So you've got these players, you see Nadeo putting it out play, but you've got these players who have got the capability to give you a bit of that technical flexibility. They can step into that back line, play in that back five or the back three, depending on the phases of possession. And then they can uh, push into midfield as well when you uh, do have control of the ball and you're looking to try and build out in that possession phase. Uh, the Singapore fans now making their own noise. Got the roof covered as well, so it all stays in here. Really adds to the atmosphere. I think the scary thing, Russian, is the bulk of that defence. Uh, some of them are teenagers still. The rest are in their early 20s, more or less. It's uh, it just stands in a great stead, doesn't it? This is outside of the three minnows in this competition: Cambodia, Laos, and Timor Leste. They are the youngest squad mm. in this competition. Singapore, the oldest squad, yeah. at almost 28 years of age. Yeah, it's a wonderful contrast, and uh, the two different. Styles, I would say, or perspectives from, from these two sides and where they each are in their phases of development. With Shin Tae Yong, I think, very much looking at trying to bring through the next generation of talent and molding them into this, this aggressive, attacking, high intensity team that he wants them to be. And I mentioned this with younger players, it can sometimes be easier to, to uh, get your ideas across to them and be more willing to take those on. And I think for Indonesian players as well, it's, it's good to be exposed to that sort of coaching, that sort of mm. level of coaching and that sort of level of professionalism and uh, those sorts of qualities that he has, Shin Tae Yong. It just, it just exposes you. It's, it's a matter of education as well. Yeah, he's proved he's very much his own man and there was pressure on him to pick, for example, Ilya Spasejevic, who has got more international goals than all the other forwards that have been picked in this squad so it doesn't fit his system that's a lovely ball over for Irfan from Alfreander Devanga way by Irfan yeah it's not even just about fitting into the into the system it's about how he gets along with the rest yeah. of the team the rest of the squad and, you know yeah, yeah and and, and uh, and that's so important, especially in a tournament like this, where you're going to be stuck together for a while in that bubble. You know, and this is, is something that uh, Tatsuma Yoshida spoke about. It's a great challenge. Great mark there so. from Song Wiyong. He's rode out the challenge as well. Up to Paris Rumley on the left-hand side, fifth to Singapore. He to put a much better goal in for Iksan Pandi. Uh, breaking news, of course, leading up into this match that Iksan Fandi, who was poised to play in the top flight of Norwegian football with his club, FK Europe, has just made the move to his brother's club in Thailand, who's in this team as well. Irfan Fandi, they, he's going to BG Patel, Russia. What did you make of that one? We'll as come we back see Asnawi. He's put out for a corner. Well worked by Indonesia there, just to play through the middle initially. Draw Singapore into these narrow positions and then release us now in its space out wide on the right hand side. It's an enough cross, someone heading it away. Yeah, interesting one the timing of the announcement coming just before this match. Wonder what the uh, <laughs> thinking was behind that. There must have been some discussions with the player about it. Uh, it's an interesting move. Well, we'll, we'll see how the set piece develops. Before we investigate that further. Oh, a bit of a flap there. 
from Hassan Sunny. Uh, pretty good tournament so far, the veteran keeper. Uh, Pratama Arhan, we know he's got wonderful technique and delivery on his left foot. Not just about his throw in, we saw him score a brilliant goal against uh, Malaysia last time out. High energy, great work rate, gets up and down at left hand side. Successive corner here for Indonesia. Near post. This time pretty well dealt with from Zulfami. And a quick ball up. It's a good ball as well, but it just curves away from Faris. You see the idea from Harris Harun. It's a clear strategy, isn't it, Russian? Yeah, I mean, look, go for it. In those situations as well with us now, we credit to him on that occasion. He defended that really well. Read the pass, read the bounce of it, came across and uh, cut out that uh, danger. Finally, is there to clear it away. Up to the other air front. I wonder how long uh, he's going to be playing alongside his brother at BG Patum because there's talk about Irfan moving on from BG Patum. Uh, Rumours that uh, John Book are looking at him. Yep. If they can uh, stump up the cash. It's a fair amount as well. A million dollars. Now, here is that long throw, and this time it's a much longer run up. He's got the space on this side. Pratama, they've not put a man on him this time. Should be straightforward. Oh, that's a, and again, an immediate release. He's slipped as he was just about to make contact with the ball. Big divot there from him. Well, that's the uh, the great thing about Hassan. And, and Singapore here, with these long throws, obviously they would have looked at that, they would have studied it, they would have worked on it on the training ground. What Singapore do have is at least they have height at the back. Mm. Uh, we know aerially they are strong. And Hassan is a, a very confident an experienced goalkeeper. He's been one of Singapore's best players, I think, in this competition. That's where Exxon off the ball, but got a sense. Excellent coverage from Alfreanda. Yeah, it's just scary when you think about the future of Indonesian football. Alfreanda is 20. Pratama Arhan, just 19. 20 just a 20 yesterday. Just happy yesterday. Birthday happy birthday to, to Pratama yeah. Arhan. Risky Riddle, 20 oh. years of age. Wow. Asnawi 22. Yes, Asnawi 22, playing in Korea. Here we go now. His song. Oh, that was a good intervention! And all the rebounds. Singapore denied anyway. It would have been offside. Oh, this is uh, encouraging play from Singapore. If you're a Singapore fan, you see that the variance in the runs there. Nixon just peeling off towards the near uh, post. All right. Tell you what, he doesn't catch that one well at all. Missed times, the hit on that. He'll be disappointed with himself because uh, when I spoke to him after he scored those two goals, oh, oh Adam has got it with a high challenge. What a great one, that looks bad. I don't know if there's any malice in that. He's apologizing. It's a terrible challenge from Norada. Be very fortunate if he gets away with it. And he's been told just to quickly walk away from this one. Oh, I mean, he, he, look, he's got his eyes on the ball, sure, but you can't go flying into your position like that. But to clear, Roshan, you, you feel the worst it would be is a yellow, and it is, isn't it? So, do you think I, it could be worse? I, listen, I, I've, seen, be worse? I've seen sending offs for, for that, for challenges like that. We've yeah. seen it in the world of football, haven't yeah. we? You know, his knee is essentially gone with a knee to Witan's chest in that situation. The yellow card it is. I think it ended up being one of those that probably looked worse than it was because it got up fairly quick. It did look pretty bad, didn't it? The contact made. Murata has got a yellow card. It's a pretty early one as well. Way by Zulfami. Also taken there by Morris. And a good touch on by Ricky Kambuaya. Here's Irfan. Fairly even Stevens at the moment for you? Yeah, nice even contest at the moment. 
And I think uh, the Indonesia Malaysia game, <laughs> you remember how quick the pace and the tempo was in that one. We haven't seen that sort of intensity yet in this match, and that's completely understandable very early on. Yeah. Also, because it was that one off effectively. That's it? right. It was almost a winner take all. Wasn't yeah. It? I think Shin Tae-yong mentioned something about uh, the first two matches of this competition being uh, a way for them to sort of get into the rhythm of play. And I mean, they blew those teams, those two teams away, didn't they? If that was them getting the rhythm of play, <laughs> it's no surprise they made their way top of the group into the semi-finals. And then he said, from then on, after those first two matches, essentially everything has been treated like a final. Yeah, he well, said then. every game now as well, all the way treated as a final. I, I love the, the mind games that were played as well in the build-up to this one. He was saying Singapore, they will come at us, we're the underdog, trying to play it up, put the, trying to put the pressure on. He's been trying to do that sort of thing throughout this tournament. And here come Indonesia. Asnawi. Irianto. Goes down there by Zulfari. Rachmat is another player who's been so impressive for Indonesia. Another one, 22 years of yeah. age, can play in central defense, can play in central midfield, doesn't look out of place at all. Started his career up top. And he slowly worked his way back down the pitch. Just looking to try and put it through the legs of Zulfami there. Well defended by Zulfami. Came in for a bit of criticism uh, after that Thailand game. A bit harsh player with uh, really good qualities is the reason why he's in the national side the re reason why Tuma Yoshida puts him in the starting 11 fourth corner for Indonesia defended on the corner Indonesia looking for a way to break through Asnawi has fallen to Witan Sulaiman Wait to pull the trigger. And the first touch from Witan was, was excellent. And what that did was it unbalanced Harris Harun just as he receives it. Good run. That first touch. It's an unexpected one for that Singapore defense. Because it takes him across the penalty area here. It just unbalances Harris just for the moment. That's enough eventually. They put uh, Witan off his shot at goal. And, uh, incredible talent. I'm just talking about these incredibly talented Indonesian <laughs> players. He's off in uh, Europe, Lechia Gdansk in Poland, Witan Sulaiman. And he played in the Serbian League. Talking of Serbian League, that's where Edwin Malana plays. He's just come across now, Indonesia. Problem there, but except the one is okay. There's Iksan. Sometimes hit the ball to him as a foul. Harris saw the run there of Faris Rumley. He's looking to release him as much yeah, as they can, can't they? You know what needs to be better than the type of pass? Um, in that situation, Harris, he, he kind of lofted it in behind. It needs to be a driven pass. He needs to hit it with his instep like you're shooting at goal almost you need to drive it in behind to that space so there's pace on the ball and it becomes difficult for a defender to recover and maybe even read the flight of it that's Indonesia knowing that Singapore have that threat on the counter attack that defense is going to have to be alert all throughout this match touch on Brent Witten's a nice one here's Asnawi back to Witten Sulaiman by the Indonesian skipper. <laughs> so now he's gone straight through Safwan here. Yeah? I mean, uh, you can see those fighting qualities. He is late with that challenge. Well, coming into this, uh, Indonesia had the most fouls, 58 fouls. They came in the most yellow cards, nine. And uh, yeah, some of the ASEAN press, particularly Vietnam, because of what happened in their group game, call them, uh, well, they weren't very diplomatic, shall we say, in the press. About what they saw as the tactics and the way they played their football was uh, rough. 
I think it's probably the most diplomatic way of saying it. <laughs> well, again, Singapore looking to just move things on very quickly. Intelligent touch from uh, Song. Turn away from Risky. Left this uh, knee in the tie of Song Uyong. There's an almost yellow card to Kume, but that's why we have no place today for Ramai Rumakek, who is suspended for this one. They have nine yellow cards. Singapore not far behind. 51 fouls coming into this game with eight yellow cards. There's Sharan Sulaiman. Before cross to a looping header. And that was creeping in from Sakwan. That's what he's so good at doing. Yeah, nice idea. Really nice idea from Safwan. You can see exactly what he was trying to do as the ball came into him. He's trying to use the pace of it. Notice that Nadeo was off his line. Tried to guide it and loop it over him. Again, Sharan with the pinpoint delivery from the set piece. He's one of the danger men for Singapore in the set pieces, but it's a pretty free header, isn't it? Yeah, he just managed to, to peel away from that defense. And sometimes when you get yourself out in those wider positions, that defense can just forget that you're a threat. Nobody's sort of talking in that defense, paying attention to his positions. And that can be an issue. So Farmy stepping up to take the uh, corner this time. Just spot, spotting that little tussling in the box. They might be sensing a goal here, Singapore. Nadio, touch on it from the defender as they try to hit Singapore on the counter here, Indonesia. Scoring forward did accept a one, onside or not? No, the five has gone up for Irfan. Could have been a chance there for Indonesia, you know. The potential to break forward here. Just needed to keep himself onside there, Irfan Jaya. Across to Nazrul Nazari. Shadan Sulaiman. Made up of three players from the same club team, Ryan City Sailors, Ryan Slam and Kanasarun and Song Yong. So a lot of familiarity there. Got Faris Rundle as well, you've got Nor Adam Abdullah, who dominates Singapore and the league at the moment. Here's Song, done well, Song, looking good. trying to do I think just touch it on the space behind the Indonesian defense for Iksan to get uh, on the end of <laughs> nasty collision play will continue for now Just winded, I think. And it'll hurt both players. Uh, yeah. It's one of those, isn't it, that, that both these guys have got to go for. 50-50 ball in the air, both eyes on the ball, wanting to win it. This, uh, this is coming together. Derek Setiawan and uh, Irfan. You'll be fine in a minute, won't you? Be bad enough to keep you off uh, <laughs> or take you off in a semi final. Riddick referred to Ezra Walian today, who's been pretty much the first choice striker for Indonesia. Maybe a little bit less mobile than Riddick. His, uh, his, his output hasn't quite been the best in this competition but uh, you can see his role in the team in certain instances he's he's got mobile players around him so he's almost like that that foil and target man that he can play it into release it quick touches into runners off him the free kick here for Indonesia a 
Murphy under the Wanga. Wanga <laughs> right into the wall. It's a, it's a brutal, ambitious ball for Song Wiyong to get onto. This possession back to Indonesia straight away. It does allow Singapore obviously to push up the pitch as they've done here. Uh, Ricky Kambuaya, who not mentioned too much until now. Indonesia just edging possession at the moment. But, uh, in terms of chances, not too many for either side. Just know the relationship here between uh, Rahmat and uh, Alfiandra. When uh, Alfiandra does step out, as he's doing here to apply pressure on Singapore in midfield, Rahmat steps back into the back line. The Singapore broken through the middle here. There is Harris Harry. The continues. The foul of four on Paris. And they're going on. That's now it. Through the legs. The shot out. Back to us now it. Can they finish? Yes, they can! What a goal that is for Indonesia with Atsulaba. Opens the scoring. Oh, that is brilliant from Indonesia, and that's all Asnawi. The desire to make something happen for his team down that right hand side. Harris tried to foul him, almost took him down, got back up on his feet, and then this give and go here. The return pass, Asnawi not making Shadan. And then the return ball from Witan, first time into that space for Asnawi. And then the cutback, wonderful finish from Witan. You know, he just doesn't panic in that situation. Allows the ball to come across his body, opens up his body inside of the foot. Guides it away from uh, Hassan Sani. And that's a wonderful, wonderful goal. Didn't need to take the extra touch for us the first time. That helped the Nick. You look at his game intelligence and his wonderful technique with Tan. He gets himself into these positions and he knows exactly what he's going to do when the ball comes into him. Do I need to hang on to it? Do I need to play it first time? And he just makes these right decisions. And backs himself because he's got the technique in those situations. I know the situation, I need to pass it first time. And I've got the technique to do it. So he doesn't need to hold on to it as some players might need to do in those situations before playing a pass. First shot on target Indonesia results in a goal. They have the lead here, just coming up to the half hour mark in this semi final first leg. Outside did it sit one. But really, that was the brilliant from uh, Asnawi down that right hand side. He just broke free, broke forward. He tried to bring out that, yeah, he is just a little bit offside, isn't it? Touch there, it's with Asnawi at the assist. Goal. That was a great run from him. They tried to do the cynical side of it, didn't they? Your favorite part of the game, taking players down in the counter attack. Was Nazar Nazari. And uh, you know what? Credit to the referee as well for not being quick on the whistle. Allow the play to go on, allowed Indonesia to have that advantage, even though Asnawi was stumbling over looking like it was going to fall but he got himself back up on his feet but as soon as Singapore conceded that goal their coach Tatsuma was telling them just heads up quickly get the ball back there he is very much defending his side and uh, both Harris Harun the skipper and the goalkeeper Hassan Sani have been quick to defend him as well. And putting on a show of unity, Singapore. Here's Paris Romley. Let's see what Tepatan is looking to do there. Ritan Sulam and the goal scorer. Now come Buaya. Pull that back. 
to, to his wrist. And it was Zulfami that uh, just got given a bit of the run around here from uh, from Loya and Rahmat. It's that arm that comes across him. And the referee will have a word with uh, Zulfami. Good morning, perhaps. It's interesting for Indonesia how they can swap it around. There's our man Witan Sulaiman who scored the goal with Asnawi supplying it. It's it's it, it starts from from when he they break forward down that right hand side and then you know he goes down that that channel that give and go with Witan as I mentioned the intelligence of when he needs to play that first time and that first touch into Asnawi and then continues his run. He's not passing it and then admiring his pass or looking at it and going oh that's that's beautiful that's now we go and see what you can do he's give it go what's the next position i can take up and that's in the penalty area and the weight on that ball from us now as well means witan can just allow it to come across his body open himself up and guide it past the goalkeeper did it that's great work there from irfan it's a song we are now Nazrul, here's Exxon. situation there was a player in the way I think uh, from the other teams I've been thinking Indonesia are getting a bit of a taste of their own medicine because they have been really dishing it out as I said the team with the most fouls in this tournament thus far Pratama is okay they won't care they've got the all-important goal at the moment got some thinking to do now before we went through uh, that replay of the goal I was just talking about Indonesia's ability to switch it up and it's uh, when you've got players who are so versatile and, and tactically sound and technically very good you can almost at times in matches just rotate it and so at times you see Rahmat Irianto playing in central defense at times you see Alfreandra in there and then in midfield, they switch it around a little bit as well. And this, on this occasion, Alfred has just dropped into that back line. Away by Fafruddin. Towards Didik Setia 1. Safwan gets there ahead of him. There's Rahmat, who's okay now. Important touch from Son And there's a foul on him. Yeah, I mean, look, look, that's, that's another awful challenge. The two left backs have gone flying into uh, the opposition. Both have come away with uh, just yellow cards. So, look at this here. I mean, Song takes it away from him. And that's such a late challenge. And again, I have now, to I'm go gonna, back to challenges like this. We've seen them. Listen, we've seen players in those situations get sent red. off. Yeah, I was going to say. That's a horrible challenge. It was the same with the... Do you think both of them have been a bit lucky? I think both of them have been lucky. I think Nor Adam was, was, was fortunate with his first one. And Arhan has been fortunate with that as well. The referees let them both off the hook. Could be 10 against 10. Again, thankfully, he's got up quickly. Wittan Salam was on the receiving end of Nor Adam's challenge earlier. So, set piece we talked about, Sapon, remember, similar position earlier, got a header on target that Nadio just managed to tip over. Touch on by Irfan. We'll get it away, Indonesia. There's Nasir Nazari to cover. Back to Hassan Sani. 
So Fami under pressure here. He's lost the ball. Needs to get himself up quickly. And in Indonesia, into the side netting. That could well have been number two with and Salomon as well to his tally. Wonderful pressing by Indonesia. Really good pressing. Look at that. Witan's already saying that's where the next pass is going to go. I'm going to close off this angle. It's going to go out to Tufami Rachmali Rianto. Wonderful work from him. Just more aggressive, just hungry in that situation. Tufami has a look up. He doesn't see any options in front of him. So he thinks, I'm, I'm just going to try and hang on to this if I can. But Rachmali's just too aggressive there. You have to understand the referees as well. Some referees would have given a free kick to Zulfami in that situation, saying there was a late challenge. But with this referee, he kind of tends to let things go a little bit. I think that was a hope, wasn't it, from uh, yeah. Zulfami when he went yeah. down there. Just put Hassan in uh, a lot of trouble there. There's Tatsuman having a chat with Noor Adam in particular. Take us through this, Roshan. <laughs> I, I'm going to guess the uh, red, red, red magnets uh, are Singapore players, and he's trying to say <laughs> Thank to, you. Try, trying to say to Nora Adam, perhaps not touch but let's have a let's have a look at the goal. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see from us now. He was taken out initially by Harris, and you're thinking in these situations, you, you know, the cynical side of it is say foul him, and he tried to foul him, but he didn't succeed because now, as now he just had the drive to keep going, got back up on his feet, got forward. And I still had the presence of mind, composure to not make Shadan with uh, that pass through into Witan. And then I was touched on the cutback and then the quality of the finish. He, he's going to be a massive player, Witan Sulaiman. Him and Eggy are the two that Indonesia are pinning their hopes on. Mulana arrived only yesterday, so will not be available until Sat uh, Saturday. Yes, that's right. For the second leg. Good news for Singapore is that Hassan Sani is up. Yeah, Russell, just going back there, it, it appeared that he was looking to try and push Noradam a bit further up on that board. That's enough. I, I think he, he wanted him to perhaps maintain his, his width a little bit more so there could have been an outlet potentially for him. But uh, that's another lovely run from Witan. And what I like about tactically about Witan's role here is that he, he's got that freedom to go and exploit any sort of spaces that that uh, he wants to. It becomes very difficult to pick up. He really excels in that sort of free role in possession, I think, Witan. So I won't get that. Back to Nadio. Here's Alfredo Devanga. Not spreading those passes, doesn't he? And we're back. There could have been a, a bit of defensive instruction to Noradam there as well. But we see him now just looking to try and stretch out that uh, Indonesian back line off the ball. Of course, as uh, decide to go straight down the middle up to this left hand side here's no Adam oh lovely work from him That's the best young player in the Singapore Premier League last season Ranga with the clearance here's Nazar Nazari for looking for the equalizer. Shannon Silaman on to Norada. That's tough one. Harris gets a touch on Shannon. A foul on him. Got the ball, ref. Not this being uh, said by Irfan. A nice and patient in possession there, Singapore. I, I like how they sort of just look to work this. Gets to the ball first, it looks to me like a good challenge. You know, from the referee's point of view, you might think it's overly aggressive and from behind, but uh, I mean, I, I think he's actually put a decent challenge in. So these 
situations have been Singapore's strength, as we've mentioned. So that's why Indonesia very wary of them. Shalom Salama. Morada, oh, sorry, Zulfami, standing over the ball. It's Zulfami. Somehow that's been kept in. It's away by Rahman Elianto. Just about three minutes left in this first half. Morada, lovely control by him. One back by Witan Sulaiman though. There was a foul on Morada. Shit, hey, oh. Happy with that decision and how long perhaps it took. Yeah, I think it's just looking to see if uh, there was an opportunity for an advantage to take place. Irfan's gone down on the far side of the pitch, he's gone back up on his feet. That's good to see. Zofami. Should be a little bit of uh, added time, of course, with the injury stoppages that we had. Song Wayong back with Indonesia now. There's Kambuaya. <laughs> so family looks annoyed. Yeah, Ricky Kambuaya. I think he's uh, in excellent for Indonesia in midfield. He's one of those players, you know, all, all the eyes will be on everyone else. Witan Salaiman will be talking about Egi Maulana, Elkin Baggett, but. Uh, Kambuaya is that uh, machine in midfield, never stops running, and he's such an intelligent player as well. I love how he's aware of his positions and the body shape that he needs to take up to receive the turn away from pressure, sees what's happening around him. Wanga up against Iksan. You mentioned earlier that we felt Singapore in midfield has not been their best work. They've been good on the transitions, perhaps. Same kind of problems today. Well, no, not not particularly just in midfield. I mean, in possession. Yes. As, as a team, it's it's not looked. They've not looked that smooth. Not looked that great. Um, but when they when they do have these opportunities in the counter attacks, then that pass selection, that type of pass that they play into the spaces for runners, it's got to be better. It's got to be these driven passes from this lofted style passes, which give time for mm. defenders to reorganise themselves. Lovely ball out from uh, Hassan Sani to Norada. So Fami stepping out. Yeah, there we go. No, no, you brought up exactly the same point I was was going to uh, to bring up. You see Safwan picking up a yellow card for himself. It's a late challenge. Very late. Into the back of uh, Witan. That's a ball kicked into him from uh, Rahmat as well. <laughs> Surprises three minutes. We have had a number of stoppages, haven't we? For the uh, fouls, the injuries. Morada. Would you say, Roshan, this scoreline probably a fair reflection of what we've seen so far? Or? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think so. I think it is. I mean, Create a chance like that with the quality that you have and finish it off. Level. No, Singapore have actually created much danger. That's not to say Indonesia themselves have created much mm. of note, but uh, they had that moment of quality there from uh, Asnawi and Witan with the finish. I mean, it's. <laughs> I struggle with that uh, that word deserve in football it's a, it's a strange word in football for me because you sometimes see 
What's the aim of the game? The aim of the game is to score goals, right? And to and to win matches. And you could you could have defended for 90 minutes and created like two chances, score one goal, and end up winning the game. And people might say, yeah, but you didn't deserve, deserve to win. Yeah. You've done the job, right? You've done the job. What does that mean? You deserve it, right? Here's Asnawi. Song battling away here against the wing back. Harris. Harris, I should say. He gets a free kick here. Might be a little air frustration here for Singapore. Yeah, the, the entire atmosphere, the environment around this has just gone a little bit flat. And this suits Indonesia. They've got the goal. They don't need to you know, open themselves up and, and be as aggressive as they were against Malaysia. This Irfan loves his driving runs from time to time up to Nazrul Lazari. Will be a throw in. One final chance perhaps for Singapore at the end of this first half. Will change the complexion of this game, of course. They can score here. Nazrul. Foul. Should probably wrap things up in this first half. Pratama, he's been in the wars, hasn't he? Well, a lot more of that uh, tactically disciplined performance from uh, Indonesia here defensively. Similar, I would say, to what we saw in the second half against uh, Malaysia and, and against the whole game against Vietnam, Vietnam pretty yeah. much. Heavy touch on from Zulfami. Kambuaya, we've had the three minutes. And the first half comes to a close here at the National Stadium with Indonesia in the lead against Singapore in the semi final first leg. Thanks to this man here, Witten Sulaiman. But it's been a first half of few opportunities. The best one falling to Safwan Barudin. Yeah, uh, smart header from Safwan, and, and that's where Singapore have looked perhaps the most uh, threatening from those set-piece situations. Remember, two legs, the semi-final, still a real long, long way to go of this one. Uh, in this one, Indonesia, as we see, getting together in that little huddle just before they go off into the locker room. But uh, I think they've been the better side in the first half. I think they've been the better side. Singapore really need to improve on their pass percentages. Um, they've only completed 62% of their passes in the first half and that's, that's not good enough quality to uh, to cause problems for the opposition so halftime score then at the national stadium in this aff suzuki cup semi-final it's singapore nil indonesia one